uh, and to introduce myself uh, in that way, to say the woman is the spine of the family. And um, our little family unites uh, the world, uh, unites India, where my husband and spiritual teacher Mohanji is. And I come from former Yugoslavia. Um, I was a refugee at the age of 14. I had a near-death experience at the age of 23. I've been through a lot of uh, experiences that uh, firmly put me on spiritual path. And um, today I would like to speak about Ahimsa, from which veganism as a movement, as this beautiful community growing around the world, is stemming from. And Ahimsa is Paramodharmaha. Paramodharmaha, the greatest, the highest of Dharma. And uh, when I stayed alive, when I had the blessing to come back into my body, um, I made a wish, I made a wish to shift from karma to dharma, to spend uh, the rest of my life serving the dharma, serving the highest of the teachings. So um, I've, uh, I searched deeply and extensively uh, through different religious backgrounds, different spiritual paths, until I came upon the teachings of Sanatana Dharma, and I was deeply touched by great masters like Mahatar Babaji, Sai Baba, and the very tenant of living our truth, right? So we sometimes like to um, embrace a certain uh, identity. Uh, this is the whole point about ego, the certain mask, and then uh, reinforce that in our life and present ourselves in that way, be very conscious of how we present ourselves. But then at a certain point, uh, there comes a pull in life to drop all the masks. And to live our truth really requires a lot of courage. So I really salute all the speakers from earlier today uh, who were um, breaking those barriers, breaking the grounds, who were actually opening the doors of veganism and ahimsa in the world. There were many in the past. There were other movements. We are aware of a um, hippie movement that happened in the 60s and the certain probably small mistakes that were made in term of, terms of using the uh, drugs and so forth, and I, I feel that now the real time has come for the experiential spirituality that unites all the religions, all the spiritual paths to come into life. And veganism and ahimsa are at the core of it. Uh, I am also blessed to be a director of the Himalayan School of Traditional Yoga. I dedicated my life to yoga as the ancient science. I really truly live it and honor it. And I say with full confidence that one cannot be a yogi if one is not in Ahimsa. Ahimsa as Paramodharmaha, as the greatest of the Dharma, is the first of the Yamas of Patanjali. And um, what happens with Ahimsa is that it has to evolve organically from within. It has to grow from within. It cannot be uh, imposed on us from the mental level, from dogma, from teachings of the society, right? It has to sprout from within. Only then it is real, because it is based in pure awareness. It is in nature of love to expand and in nature of our awareness to expand. And once the awareness expands, we cannot be in violence, because awareness asks for alignment. So for us to be aligned, we, can, we cannot but serve Ahimsa. Because only when we are aligned, we can actually uh, consume the food with awareness. We can uh, wear the clothes that don't have any violence in, in their making, right? The way they were made. Wear such clothes, drive cars uh, which don't have violence, and, and anything. And more than anything, our intentions, our thoughts, words, and actions. So it's a calling. Veganism is a calling of awakening into our true nation, nature, which is purest unconditional love and compassion, right? So it's a huge, huge responsibility for all of us to live our truth, to live those teachings. So I want to start off with my little family. <laughs> Here in the middle, you can see our daughter Mila. She's now eight, uh, eight years old. And um, since she was 40 days old, she was already traveling. Um, Mohanji is a great inspiration for all of us. Um, Palak, the organizer knows we have uh, discussed uh, about this kind of conferences a couple of years back and it, at that time it was at the thought level 
uh, from the pure heart when you put any intention it has to materialize. So for me, I had really goosebumps today when the music was played and when I see so much of energy behind this very idea, which is materializing into a global community, into a global movement. And that movement will change the culture. And with the new culture, we will have vegan diet as the normal, normal diet, right? It has to happen. Um, I wanted to draw a line between being vegan, being natural, ahimsa, and being in yoga. So uh, yoga is the ancient science, um, is the path to the union of the individual consciousness with the cosmic, and it's also the destination. It means both, right? Being in the state of yoga. Uh, when we are in the state of yoga, we are aligned and we are natural. We are not trying to impress, we are not trying to imitate, right? It's being authentic, being natural, it's the most natural thing. And same way, the most natural thing is to be in Ahimsa. If you ask any child, would you like to kill any animal today to eat it? No child will want to do that. I don't think there's a single child on this planet. So I start uh, this journey with a message from Mohanji. I represent Mohanji Foundation, as Benakshi said. So since Mohanji could not come to be with us physically, I wanted to, to feel his energy, hear his voice and his yeah. message, and then I will continue. Greetings to all of you. This is Mohanji. I wish the Vegan India Conference 2019 a great success. The very idea that the Vegan Conference came to India, it's really appealing and I'm very happy that, that you're doing it in India. And I wish all, the, all of you who are participating in this conference great health and great success. Today, the, the idea of vegan is spreading in the minds basically on the understanding of being good in this world or being natural in this world. When you are, a, when you are vegan, you are natural. When you do not harm any life because of your existence, you are actually being very natural. That, that's the height of human experience. The greatest of human experience is the ability to express compassion. I always believe in one thing. All the species across the, across the world, they all have instincts. The basic survival instinct is expressed in every, to every species, including human species. But human beings, we have the capacity to use intelligence and imagination instead of only instinct. So, we express our life or we live our life using intelligence and imagination. That's what we see in the world today. The whole developments of the world are connected to intelligence and imagination. So, uh, why, why we live the life of a human? It is, it is the, the uh, great experience or what, what is our highest experience possible as a human, human being in the human birth is the ability to express compassion. When we do not have to harm any being for our existence, we are actually living a great life. This is, this is the whole idea of being vegan. So I fully endorse the, the, the idea of vegan and I fully endorse the concept of uh, being good in this world, doing good and being good. And this is also healthy. When we, uh, when we are fully into ourselves and fully being human, then we will always be very kind and compassionate. I wish you a great life ahead and I'm happy that I could speak to you. And um, I wish this conference and all the organizers of this conference a great success. I'm always with you. Thank you. Uh, I chose this photo. This was uh, taken in a wolf sanctuary. It's actually a wolf. Uh, it's called the uh, Wolf Sanctuary in Sedona, in Arizona. And um, this uh, wolf was abused by humans. Uh, especially men, beaten and yeah. So she she was responding, uh, you know, with fear to anybody who comes closer. But with ladies, she's pretty much okay. But not she doesn't come uh, to anybody very often. And uh, we connected, and when she came to me, and I put my hands as a fur, it just opened my heart. And uh, from in that moment, I felt um, the suffering of all the animals, what we have done to them. Monchi said, we have 
aside from the instinct, we also have intelligence, we have imagination, we have awareness. So we have a greater responsibility to take care of those who are supposedly below us. Right? And because they function on instinct, they are so innocent, and we exploit their innocence. So I was, um, I'll just share briefly my own uh, vegan journey. I was, first of all, fascinated by the subject of what is it in human beings that makes us violent? You know, when I was 14, when the war started in former Yugoslavia, I remember uh, my wonder and my, uh, my amazement with how could one of my neighbors that we were knowing for so many years suddenly become our enemy? What happened in his mind? What is it that creates that shift in the human mind where you can perceive each other as an enemy? And not only that, but be able to kill one another. Uh, during my um, uh, life, I was blessed with amazing scholarships. I studied in Rome, and then I did my master's in America, specializing in peace studies. Um, and the interesting thing was that I used to hate McDonald's, especially because of the fast food with meat base. And the scholarship was given by the wife of the McDonald's. Her name was John B. Croc. And after her husband died and left her with a lot of money, she started this amazing scholarship for students from, from war-torn areas. And I was one of those rare students who were blessed to win the scholarship. So uh, that was a sign for me, exactly as we see now vegan food in McDonald's. We, we should never judge. We should never judge and we should see everything as fluid. And whatever we see that we don't like, we can change. And during this uh, peace studies, uh, we studied uh, at depth the concept of conflict and war and the way uh, out of it. And what I understood um, uh, when we spoke about the example of the Auschwitz, the Holocaust, and you know, there were German families re living right next door to Holocaust. I don't know if you're aware of that. They're literally just like from here to the, the chair, for example. They're right there. And then, you know, uh, thousands and thousands of Jews are being burnt uh, in the gas chambers uh, and they used to get uh, the, the ashes falling down in the yard and they would eat their food and cough, blow it off and continue eating, right? And they just did not, they were not bothered by it. It didn't, it didn't bite them, right? So that's what I found fascinating. And how is it possible? What is it in our human nature that creates this barrier? So during my studies, we spoke about the concept of alien other. Uh, in our mind, we create a barrier and we say, I do not relate to that. It's the alien other, right? There is no connection. There is no compassion. So we justify it. In that way, uh, we create a barrier. We turn the blind eye. It doesn't mean we are bad. Those are also people with their families, with children, taking care of the children, normal people but they created the barrier of alien other. So this is uh, the barrier that we need to remove from the hearts and minds of people as vegan activists. We need to appeal to the hearts. Um, I was recently, I live in Slovenia now, I was part of one vigil, we went in front of the slaughterhouse, we stood there, we waited, they brought the cows, there was uh, one cow which was, they were crammed into the truck, and there was one cow that was like stepped on and her eye was peeking and she was full of horror and despair. And it's really heartbreaking to see that. And to hear the sounds in the back, of course we cannot enter the slaughterhouse. Uh, we could hear the sounds of the animals there. And it's just really a Holocaust feeling. It's exactly, I, I felt I was at that Auschwitz. We have created our Holocaust after the World War II with the um, uh, this mass farming, um, an animal farming, um, factory farming, sorry. With factory far farming, we have created the Holocaust, and it's our moral, res moral responsibility not to turn the blind eye, not to uh, see them as the alien other. Right? So this is uh, number one thing, but I feel that um, in order to achieve that, it's important to bring into awareness what happens in the slaughterhouses, but more than that, it's to speak positively. You know? And as vegan activists, we, we have to speak with conviction and um, in a positive way and uh, really not pretend uh, that we are higher than the rest. Right? So I feel this is a really important point. 
So I'll share in my case, I was not a vegan right away. I first um, dropped the red meat, then I dropped the white meat, then I dropped the seafood, then I dropped the eggs, and finally I dropped the dairy products. So it took me a while, and this is what I always share with people. So allow yourself the time. Uh, allow yourself the time to readjust your um, food habits uh, and slowly go with it. But uh, go step by step. You may not be able to do it right away, but if we apply the awareness, we will be able to do it. So my um, first impression with uh, meat was when I was, I think, around nine or ten years old. We had this beautiful white rabbit. So we had around 12 white rabbits in our home in Croatia before the war. And they were cute white rabbits with red eyes. And I used to count them and you know, play with them. And one day I saw one is missing. You know, there were 11. And then that day, uh, my grandmother prepared a dish with this meat. <laughs> and she lied to me. She said that, uh, OK, take this leg. This is chicken leg. Right? But I was like, what a weird chicken leg. It has this kind of a, almost like L shape, you know? So I was looking, even when I tasted it, the meat was like more rubbery, you know, it was not as soft as chicken meat. And um, I said, but what is this? Uh, how come it's so different? Oh, maybe we bought a different one or something. Then, that same day, it didn't take me long, I understood, this is my rabbit. And I thought, <laughs> it just broke my heart that she, she lied to me and they we ate our rabbit, you know, and as a child, I, it was traumatic for me. So years later, now here's my daughter Mila, and in Serbia, in our new home, we get this white rabbit, and just see this picture, like, makes me cry, you know, the way she connected. She closed her eyes, and she put her little hand on the rabbit, and that kind of brought this kind of a healing experience for me, because through my daughter now, I can make it right, you know, because they didn't know better. They didn't know better. <laughs> and um, Mila is, we now live in Slovenia. Um, she's the only child in the entire school uh, who is not only uh, vegetarian but vegan. So it's already a big deal to be vegetarian. <laughs> so. Um, the whole huge responsibility is on her. She uh, obviously looks different than the blonde children in Slovenia, so she has the different looks, more like her father. And, uh, and she looks different, she, she's vegan, you know, she, she's treated by homeopathy and Ayurveda, she meditates with us, so it's like a completely different, she's like an alien <laughs> over there. And uh, I really spend a lot of time grooming her to to live her truth with pride, uh, and to just allow time to other children to, um, you know, understand who she is. They may not like you right away, but your responsibility is to just be truthful to yourself and love yourself. So one day she came home and she told me there was a bit of bullying happening, and then she told one child, uh, you can't uh, say this to me. Do you know who my father is? He's very powerful. Many people love him. You know, and I, I thought about, like, wow, what a profound... She didn't say he has big muscles or he's got a lot of money. She said many people love him. Right? So this is, this is uh, exactly the veganism. This is the heart of veganism. Uh, we always say we don't eat our friends, and her connection with the animals is really strong. So through our children, we will make veganism alive. This will be the new normal. This will be the new normal. So my next point was a bit more about Ahimsa as Paramadharma. Um, you know, when we eat the meat, we're probably aware of the samskaras, the concept of samskaras, the subtle impressions. Uh, it's now scientifically proven that samskaras Painful impressions are stored in the flesh, in the, in the actual flesh. Uh, our fascia, uh, the tissue between the, bo uh, the bone and the uh, skin, uh, it actually has coll collagen structure, just like crystals. So it carries information. So it's scientifically proven, last 60, 60 years we've been knowing this, that information is carried through the body. You can fry the meat, you can cook it, you can bake it. 
the information is there. So that's why um, we have now beautiful, huge yoga movement happening around the world. Um, thanks to Prime Minister Narendra Modi, from 2015 we have International Yoga Day and even yoga is becoming the new normal. <laughs> So I feel with the uh, fast-growing yoga community, we will have hand-in-hand -hand growth in veganism. Because all true yogis can't but be vegan. You know, when you actually sincerely practice yoga, you start feeling more and more. Your awareness spreads. Your connection with prana, the life force energy spreads far much more than before. And it's impossible for you to engage in violence. Yoga and violence do not go together. So that's why... Patanjali put um, ahimsa, the non-violence, as the first yama, uh, the first um, precept, social moral precept listed in Patanjali Yoga Sutras was ahimsa. And since the ancient times, the ancient sages and masters spoke about ahimsa as paramodharmaha, right, the highest of the dharma. So we have to uh, recognize that value and then live that and as I said, it's not just about the food that we eat. Sometimes even murderers are vegans. You know, it can happen that somebody chooses to be vegan, but he's still in his mind very violent. So here, when we speak about ahimsa, we speak about um, being nonviolent at the level of thought, word, and action. So moving beyond the barriers of alien other, moving beyond the barriers of species, races, with ahimsa, with yoga, with awareness and love, we embrace humanity.